Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and welcome to another episode where we'll be counting down the top 10 minifigures, examining the best of the best figures across the many years of LEGO. We kick things off near the end of 2021, worked our way backwards in years until finally we are at the top 10 best collectible minifigures of 2015. And again, these are just from the collectible minifigure series because last time we covered the best minifigures that were not part of the CMFs. Again, this is always just my opinion and I would love to hear yours, so after you see the video, do let me know down in the comments below if you agree, if you disagree, and if you think anything was missing from this list. And without further ado, let's just jump right into number 10. Alright, so coming in at number 10, we have an entry from series 13 of the collectible minifigures. This is the Egyptian Warrior. So the Egyptian Warrior introduced a brand new shield element, which you can see right here. Pretty much kind of a standard knight style shield, but turned upside down in the Egyptian fashion, which is a really cool piece to get. It also introduced a new head component, which has been painted in metallic gold and printed in blue, which is really cool to see, and also is printing on the sides of the legs. Unfortunately, this was before LEGO developed the technology to do dual molding, so as you can see right there, the legs which absolutely should have been dual molded and really there was no excuse not to do it are simply not dual molded. Anyways, besides that, which really was an unavoidable problem, the figure itself is really well done. Obviously there are a few plain aspects like no printing on the arms and of course the back of the legs not having any sort of color whatsoever, but I think it's just a well done design in general, you almost have kind of a mummy like wrap going around around the character itself, as well as the excellent detail for the Pharaoh's Quest sword and the shield being used in tandem. Unfortunately though, this easily is not one of the most interesting figures on this list, which is why we can now move on to number 9. And coming in at number 9, we have a figure from the same series, this is the Galaxy Trooper. So this Galaxy Trooper is a really well done character, it's very similar to one of the older dark blue styles of space marine like characters we got from some of the other collectible minifig series, but this one absolutely makes it feel very realistic with the dark stone grey color of printing. I love the way the armor piece which was introduced for this figure is printed with actually having the Galaxy Squad logo on it, which is really cool because it means it would fit in very well with the Galaxy Squad 2013 sets, and of course the printing of the holographic display on the face is is really awesome as well, I love how it looks on the helmet itself, and you do have an alternate face underneath if you just want to use it for other applications, which is again a really well done face. The other thing that is very simple but really makes the figure stand out to me is the inclusion of the almost Gatling gun style blasters on the back of the character there. As you can see, he can actually load his blasters on the back and you can really use this in different configurations. Pointing downwards could be a jetpack, pointing outwards like this could actually be guns, and in his hands are some blasters of his own. This character absolutely is one of the most massable figures from the line, it is really great to get this in duplicate form, and that's really why it made it on this list. The only reason why this figure is so low on the list is that underneath the armor he does not have any printing underneath which is kind of disappointing, as well as the legs and arms being fairly plain, which is why he's at number 9. With that we can now move on to our number 8 pick. And coming in at number 8 we have an entrant from the Special Monsters Series 14 line of minifigures, this is the Spectre. So the Spectre is a really fun character because he kind of fits the iconic classic ghoul or ghost kind of vibe. The special cloth element with holes being ripped in it is really fun and I love the inclusion of the very simple but effective chain as his accessory. Of course he reuses the Ninjago 2015 ghost mold, dual molded in transparent clear and dark grey which absolutely works for the character and he also has a very special glow in the dark head which is very very cute even though I definitely would have preferred maybe an alternate face that was a little bit more menacing. Now underneath the cloth piece it's literally just a plain dark grey torso which is why he may not be the most interesting character underneath, but it's just a really well done figure design and one that absolutely works great for the monsters line. But from there we can now move on to number 7. And coming in at number 7 we have another entrant from series 13, this is the Snake Charmer. So despite the Snake Charmer not having any printing on the back of the torso, which honestly is kind of odd, I really do like the inclusion of a brand new mold for both the headdress, which is awesome to see, really great to see that being reused even today, as well as the Cobra mold, which is a piece that I really wish that LEGO would use even beyond just the collectible minifig series. It's just a really fun character to have in general, the Cobra piece is super fun to have, it's a very rubbery type of piece, and I just really like the design and overall concept of the Snake Charmer, even if he isn't the most detailed in terms of printing. 
With that though, let's now move on to number 6. And coming in at number 6, we return to the Monster series. This is the Werewolf. So the Werewolf does feature dual molded legs and printing on the side of the legs, as well as printing on the sides of the arms, making him the most detailed character we have seen so far. He does reuse the Monster Fighter's Werewolf headpiece, which I think is great, no need to reinvent the wheel there. And he also reuses the Rocket Raccoon tailpiece, which again, also is great. Again, no need to reinvent the wheel. But what I really find special about the Werewolf is that he is a direct callback to the Lumberjack character from one of the early Series 5 collectible minifigs. As you can see right here, the Lumberjack is wearing the exact same outfit, right down to printing on the arms, as well as the jacket being kind of this corduroy or striped pattern with the white against the red, so apparently that figure has now been transformed into a werewolf which I just find to be hilarious. It is very clearly supposed to be that exact character just in werewolf form, which is a really fun callback and also gives us a special variant of the character itself. All in all, this is just simply a very well done, detailed character, I just love the way it all came together. Moving onwards, we can now move on to one of the Simpsons Series 2 figures. This is Marge Simpson. So Marge Simpson here is in a special outfit with a special dual molded arm for the orange there, as well as a fabric skirt element which looks great on the figure itself. Do excuse the actual video here, you see both arms actually were dual molded in orange and white. I just stole one of them for one of the Commander Cody 212th Legion clone troopers I had, but really you can see that this figure is a really well done figure in general. I love the inclusion of the earring printing on the sides of the head there, really kind of makes the figure stand out, and having the flower piece just being held by the stem is great to see as well. The purse is very simple, being just a 2x2 two two tile, but it works really well for this figure. And while the front of the torso is literally just plain orange with the waistlines being added in, it somehow works very well for the Simpsons series. And unlike some of the other figures, I, I can't really complain about the lack of printing because it does fit very well with the cartoon style. But with that, let's now move on to the top four figures. Coming in at number four, we return to the monster series. This is the Skeleton Guy. So the Skeleton Guy is a really fun character to get. It is just a minifigure dressed up in a skeleton costume, so you can see printing on the sides of the legs and the arms. Very, very simple design, but very effective, and that trick-or-treat bucket is absolutely very useful for anyone just wanting to make Halloween scenes. This is honestly, to me, the quintessential Halloween costume. Very simple simple black bodysuit with the skeleton mask on it, and I love how it evokes the printing of the classic LEGO skeleton as well. If only that white printing on the black plastic was just a little bit thicker, it would have been absolutely fantastic, probably would have been even higher on the list, but as it is right now, it's not bad, and I am very, very impressed by the fact that the mask strap printing rotates around 360 degrees on the head. It is incredibly rare that LEGO does stuff like this, although obviously they do have the technology to do it. I can think of many figures that needed it, but didn't have it, but this figure went above and beyond by having the 360 degree printing, which I really appreciate. And at number 3, we also have another entrant from the Stellar Monsters line, or Series 14. This is the Crazy Scientist, or the Monster Scientist, as he was officially called. Now, the Monster Scientist introduces a very fun add-on headpiece, just making the cranium extend very tall compared to a standard figure. They reuse kind of the same goggle technique for the Robin figure from the LEGO Batman movie, and I think that this was a really great way to introduce that style of very cartoonish eyes on goggles and glasses. It's a really fun head sculpt to have in general, but even beyond that, the figure also introduces dual molded components for black and white arms, which is just simply really useful, even outside of just this character, as well as dual molded black boots on the white legs, which is really fun to get. I love the kind of experiment jar that he has, or the beaker has a little fly in it, kind of hinting that he created the fly monster from the rest of the series. It's just such a kooky and fun character to get, which I just really appreciate the amount of detail that went into it. And if you don't want to use the special headpiece, they also have the headpiece underneath, although it definitely was a great inclusion to have this very wacky head sculpt on the top. At number 2, we have another character from the Simpsons Series 2 line. This is Bart Simpson. So, th specifically, this is the Bartman version of Bart Simpson. He has pretty much the dual molded legs as well as dual molded arms, just a plain torso, nothing too special to see there, but he does have the purple cape as well. And the headpiece has been painted with the purple top, which absolutely looks great. And it's really interesting seeing just how well the painting turned out on the character itself. I love the inclusion of the slingshot element, which was specially made for the Bart figure in the dual molded brown and dark tan. It just looks really great as an accessory piece itself. 
But from there, there is still one figure that tops even this one, and that is the classic King from Collectible Minifigures Series 13. So this is a stunning figure. I absolutely love the inclusion of the very specialized cape element. It just looks really classic for depictions of almost kind of storybook style or fantasy kings. The headpiece with the crown on the hair is pretty much just perfect, and everything about this character just screams classic king to me. I love the dark brown or standard brown recolor of the beard. The white kind of fur element on the top of the shoulders of the character itself looks absolutely fantastic, and yes, those dual mold legs really stand out. It's very clear that this was one of the figures that got one of the biggest amounts of budget for the collectible minifig series, and it really shows. I even love that you can actually see printing on the sides of the legs there, it's very hard to notice, but there's actually a jigsaw-like pattern on the red boots there, it's not just a standard dual molding, it really just feels seamless with the character. In fact, really the only annoying thing I can say about the character is that he does not have any printing on the back of the torso, which was a problem that collectible minifigures had for this series in particular, but for this character, he really didn't need it because seriously, when are you ever going to display this figure without the amazing cape behind him? All in all, this is probably one of my favorite collectible minifigs ever. I just love the design of the classic king and really wish that LEGO would bring back some of the mold sets and cape sets used for this character in more modern castle stuff because this is just a joy to get. All right, and with that, we have summed up my personal favorite, and in my opinion, the best collectible minifigures of 2015. Let me know down in the comments below, do you agree, do you disagree, and do you think anything was missing from this list? And as usual, stay tuned for next time, where we'll be moving back one more year in time, taking a look at the best CMFs and non-CMFs of the year of 2014. Thank you so much for tuning into Duck Bricks and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. And bye bye for now.